At the beginning of the Civil War, the U.S. Navy fleet consisted of 90 ships. Of these, fewer than half were deemed ready for active service. The rest were in dockyards awaiting various repairs. But while numbers might not have been in the Navy's favor, technology was. Because of foresight and planning, the active ships in the U.S. Navy were a modern and formidable force. The majority were steam-powered and bore the latest improvements. The United States had been among the first of the world powers to grasp the power of steam as an auxiliary power to sail. In the years leading up to Fort Sumter, the U.S. Navy had practically reinvented itself. The outbreak of war unleashed a flurry of shipbuilding, guided by able engineers and designers. During his career, Swedish-born engineer and inventor John Ericsson revolutionized several facets of marine technology. During the Civil War, movements of Ericsson's pencil across his drafting board were as crucial to victory as the movements of the Union Army across battlefields. His first great contribution to the war effort, developed well before the outbreak of the war, was the screw propeller. Until then, steamers relied on paddle wheels for propulsion. In 1842, Ericsson designed USS Princeton, the U.S. Navy's first propeller-driven warship and the most advanced ship of its time. It was armed with another Ericsson invention, the hoop gun, specially built to carry a larger charge with added safety. Ericsson, however, is best known for his design of USS Monitor, the U.S. Navy's innovative but rather strange-looking ironclad. With most of the ship below the waterline, with only its deck and revolutionary revolving turret exposed to enemy fire, the ship earned the nickname Cheese Box on a Raft. Ericsson launched the ship 30 January 1862, a scant 100 working days after signing the contract with the Navy. Time was of the essence because the Confederate Navy was also working on an ironclad of its own, the CSS Virginia. On 8 March 1862, the Virginia unleashed its deadly fire in Hampton Roads, sinking several wooden warships before its planned attack on blockade ships. But the following day, USS Monitor steamed into Hampton Roads and changed the course of naval history. The two ironclads engaged one another for hours, with shells bouncing harmlessly off one another. At the end of the day, the battle ended in a draw, but it was clear to all observers that the day of the wooden warship was over. Congress recognized Ericsson's vital contribution and passed a resolution praising him for his enterprise, skill, and energy in the construction of the Monitor that so opportunely came to the service of the fleet at Hampton Roads. At about the time Ericsson was developing the Monitor, James Eads, a St. Louis designer and inventor, was working on a shallow draft ironclad that would operate on the Mississippi River. Offered a contract by the Navy, Eads also completed the order in 100 days. Seven ships, collectively known as city-class ironclads, were in service on western waterways by January 1862, playing a vital role in the control of the Mississippi and its tributaries. Even before the Monitor engaged the Virginia, Eads' ironclads were making a difference in the western theater, taking part in the capture of Fort Henry on the Tennessee River. Eads stayed in constant communication with the commanders of his ships, incorporating their comments and suggestions into improved designs. John Dahlgren was a gifted naval officer, but found his true calling as a designer of weaponry. Assigned to the Washington Navy Yard in 1847, Dahlgren established the Navy's Ordnance Department and quickly became an expert. Dahlgren was a moving force in development of larger, more powerful guns. He pushed the Navy to build its own foundry, because at the time, there were no other private facilities to produce the needed weaponry. His first gun was the boat howitzer, which was designed to be used both on boats and on landings. He also led development of a cast-iron muzzle-loading cannon known as the Dahlgren gun, perhaps his most significant contribution. By 1856, the Dahlgren gun had become a fixture aboard U.S. Navy warships. His influence on armaments would be felt throughout the war that followed, 
and provide an advantage to the Union Navy. These technological advancements, particularly ironclad ships and the adoption of steam power, would make their impact felt as the Navy carried out its strategy of blockading the southern states and seizing control of the Confederacy's lifeline, the Mississippi River.